Good morning, and to God be the glory. It is a beautiful day today, and we are so glad that you are here. Welcome to this last Sunday of the Easter season. Next week, we celebrate Pentecost and Youth Sunday, which is very exciting. Uh, and today, uh, our, our liturgist is Rich, um, and he is, has, a, I think, a, a little special game coming up in just a minute, as Rich is wont to do. Um, I'm Pastor Rachel. Uh, we're so glad that you are here with us today. Uh, those of you who are joining us online, we hope that you will check in and say hi. It matters that you are here, and we're glad that you are. Uh, and those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you will look for the blue folder um, that is in there, and you can sign it and pass it along. If you haven't been here in a while, it's a subtle way to know who your neighbors are. Uh, and uh, it also just lets us know uh, if anything is needed uh, from you. Um, and those of you who would benefit from assistance in worship, we have some hearing assistance devices. We have some lights to make, it, to make the bulletin brighter. We have large print bulletins. Um, and we're continuing to work on improving our uh, accessibility. Uh, we also, oh, we have fidget devices too. So um, if any of those would help you, they're all right back in the narthex. That's the fancy word for lobby. Uh, and we hope that you'll feel free to go and uh, take advantage of those. I want to uh, offer a couple of announcements um, before we begin. First, these were found uh, just outside. So if you are missing some keys, I can't tell the brand on them. It almost looks like a weird little skull. Uh, found them? All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, and I want to say congratulations. This is the season of graduation, and we have a number of graduates in our midst. Especially want to uh, congratulate Katie Weitzel uh, and Joseph Jacobs, who graduated from uh, Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. Uh, Katie with a degree in marriage and family counseling. Uh, Joseph with his Master of Divinity. Um, and also Tom and Marianne Sherby's daughter, Ellen, graduated with a Master of Divinity too. She's in the Presbyterian process. And uh, congratulations to Dr. Connor Clare, uh, who is uh, graduated with his Doctor of Physical Therapy at Ohio State last week. We will be, yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. That's a lot of hard work. We're going to be celebrating them and all of our graduates on June 4th. So if you have someone you love that you want to make sure is celebrated, uh, please talk to me or Samantha or Pat, um, and we will make sure that they are included. Uh, we'll also be having a new members Sunday that day, June 4th. So if you've been hanging around for a while and think you might want to make this official, um, June 4th is the day. Come talk to me. If you even just want to know what membership means, come talk to me about that. Um, and I will give you the no pressure sales pitch, I promise. And also, we are celebrating today that tomorrow this church will be 125 years old. So, hooray! <laughs> We've decided to make um, the, the formal celebration of that later in the fall, hopefully at our fall picnic, which will be uh, September 12th. If you are a planner, you can go ahead and put that in your calendar now. Um, but we are just delighted and amazed. This church has been through so much uh, in this time, and uh, we give thanks that it is here and it is continuing and that each of you are part of it today. Tomorrow night is also the clout celebration of the work that they have done on social justice over the last year. It's 6.30 p.m. at St. Augustine Catholic Church, or St. Augustine. I think there's a fight about that. Um, and also, uh, look for these brochures out there. If you're interested at all in being part of our uh, UCC national meeting, General Synod, Samantha is almost on her knees begging for volunteers back there. She was on her knees, we couldn't see her, but she, <laughs> um, but she is uh, begging. If you have any time, it doesn't have to be the 12 hours, but if you can volunteer at this event in Indianapolis, we are the hosts of the national conference. And so uh, we need all hands on deck. If you can volunteer 12 hours, 
uh, it reduces your admission price to just $65 for a lot of amazing worship and speakers and learning about uh, the United Church of Christ. And there is some seriously good swag in the exhibit hall. Uh, so you can get all the tchotchkes you ever wanted. I believe that is all the announcements, but be sure to check your bulletin because there might be more. And if we take a pause and remember that for 125 years, this church has been showing up to proclaim the love of God, first in German, then in English, and in all sorts of ways we have continued to grow and to welcome in wider and wider ways. And we do it because this is what we believe, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This week, we are going to sing our opening prayer. So we invite you to sing along. young and young at heart come way up with me excited 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 I like that yeah you're still young you're still a little shorter than me it's way too big way 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 too big these kids have too much energy Adam says I I agree I agree oh did we trip yeah of course I can come on up here so I have a question for you does anybody have a pet? A pet? I have a pet? Yeah. So what do you have to do for your pet? You have to feed it? Pet it. Take it outside, pet it. Oh, they love some pets. I have a hand that looks like it's on the side of Pastor Rachel's head. So can the back of Rachel's head say what they have to do for their pet? Feed it. Feed it, yes. Yeah, and what do we have to do? You have to what? Clean up its, clean up its uh, yeah, your dog get to clean up its hair a lot because it sheds a whole lot that that little Gus does. He's not little. What else you have to do, Harper? Um, Run around with it. Yeah. What else you gotta do? Oh, I have a pet, Chloe. Mm -hmm. I did have a dog who was too. Yeah, he, died. he did die. I we loved him a lot though, didn't we? Right? Yeah. Do you have a kitty cat? Yeah. Do you have to water them? Yeah, we have a lot of kitty cats. Do you have to? So you have to. You have to water them. You got to feed them. And we have to pet them. And what does all that show them? What else do you have to do with them? You got it. Hold on. Yes. What else is, what does it show them? What else do you have to do? What do you have to do for little Neela? She tackles you. Yeah, she's a puppy. You tackle. Yeah, you have to play with them, right? But all that stuff shows. Adam said the right word. Love. It shows that we love them because we do stuff for them, right? We take good care of them. When they're little puppies, we gotta take, we gotta let them run around and use all the energy because those kids got a lot of energy, so do those animals. And when they get older, what do we have to do? Just be gentle with them? You have to be gentle with the older kitty cats, yes. right? Yeah, so to to today, Mr. Rich is gonna to talk about um, a Bible verse and Jesus tells us that to love God is to follow the commandments, which is kind of like, follow the list of things that God asked you know, to ever, um, asked us to do. And a lot of it is how we show people that we love them. So today, since we talked about all the things we do for our animals, I have a present for everybody. And it's something that you can show how you love people at home, at church, at grandma's house, at whoever's house. You ready for it? What is that? Yes. What does it do? 
What's it do? Scrub. Look, look, scrub the toilet. No, it's a, oh, this is a little tiny. It's got too short of a handle for me to well, say scrub the toilet. It's, it's a bath scrubber. It could be, but usually yeah. it's a dish scrubber. <laughs> She's four. We just cleaned, and well, what she cleaned with counts at this. Yeah, you're gonna get one. So Ooh, these are things. Have, you already have a dish. Oh, you get another one. Don't you worry, because you gotta replace these suckers. Exactly. They get dirty. This is so, the best gift ever. I know. Thank you. Can thank Reverend Lori Miller Price over at St. Andrew. Because she gave me the idea and I went, I'm stealing that. So this is how we can show everyone in our family that we love them. As a back scrub? If you, can you scratch mom's back with it? Yeah, you can go like this. Like this. We're going to go. See, there you go. It can be used for multiple purposes. But once it's used for one thing, don't use it for the other. So once you use this to clean dishes, which is really what it's for, you can show people, oh. don't put it on them. That hurts. That's yourself. Um, we can scrub our dishes for our grown-ups at home. We can even scrub dishes in the kitchen down at church and help out. No, no, no. Well, since you're almost my height, you can reach the sink. Oh. See? And that's all the requirements. We do not have any more requirements as long as you can turn the faucet on. You're not a kindergartner. I just went to your play. I'm pretty sure you did not tell me you were a kindergartner. I'm a two-year-old. Oh, they can't do it. It's amazing how all of a sudden now they're babies. I'm pretty sure I've heard from a lot of these kids for many years that they're big kids. Oh, yeah, I broke my leg. You broke your leg. Uh, funny enough, you know what happens when, hey, come here. You know what happens when grown-ups get hurt? They still got to do this stuff no matter what. Yep. So we're going to figure out ways that we can show our family that we love them by helping out. Who knew there were so many uses for a dish scrubber, people? Never thought of these things. Okay, let's pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you want? Sorry, they're being crazy kids over here, aren't they? Here. You want to sit over here? Please, thank you. You have a kitty cat. I know you do have a kitty cat. And you love your kitty cats, right? What happened when the kitty cats got old? Were we really gentle with them, right? Because that's how we show love sometimes. We gotta be really like gentle. Yeah, like they do sometimes. Well, you did get a new puppy and kitty cats, mm, they gotta take things slow She's, for that. They're like grannies. They're like grannies, yep, yep. And it might take them a little while, but hey, you gotta remember that even no, though they're not as fun, that's sit, it's not. Even though that the Neela is super fun as a puppy, we got to take care of all of them. Even the old kitty cat that may not be as fun as much fun. But we got to show them love. So we're gonna try. Oh, good. That happens a lot, but it's their ways to show love either way. So we're gonna. If you can scrub it with the carpet, I like it. Okay, can we can we pause and pray? We pause and pray, and then we're going to show people how we love them by doing lots of stuff for them? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for giving us all the big people in our lives that love us and take care of us, and help us remember that we can show our love to them by helping them out whenever we can. As we get bigger, we can do more stuff for them, and we'll be glad to help out in any way we can that shows your love and our love for them. Like I clean, Amen. Like I clean your bathtub. Yeah, like you helped me clean my bathtub. Yeah, okay, we've got... Bags, and I also have sheets too if you want to call up anything for mom. I have a real question. I'm going to scrub it down. I love you guys. But I would love to have you guys at home. At home, yes. I know. Not right now. If you go. Okay. They weren't expecting. <laughs> well, here we go. Since I'm a kid at heart, I thought that we would, well, we discussed that I should follow with my Mother's Day game now, uh, then uh, later on in the service. So good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the moms here today, those on Zoom, and those moms that we miss but hold many happy memories in our hearts. I thought 
that today we could play a Mother's Day game. So if you're a mother, had a mother figure in your life, or have even given motherly advice, please hold out your hand and show your five fingers. For each question that I ask, and you answer yes, you put one finger down. The first person that has all five fingers down will be the winner by shouting out mother. Well, maybe we should save that for the loser and just shout out mama. Uh, you will win our prize today. If you're on Zoom and you have all your five fingers down, uh, just let us know in the chat area. So let's, let's do an example question. So hold your hand up. Now, if you have signed the registry folder at the end of the pew, put down a finger. Today. Okay, so that's how the game goes. Okay, so put your five back, shake them all out. And I have 20 questions, but hopefully we'll get through the five fingers a lot uh, quicker than that. But to make it even for everybody, I have my randomizer question thing here. And Screen and tell me what the next question to read is. Okay. Okay, so with your five fingers up, we're going to start with this question. If you can remember your mom picking the winner in the Kentucky Derby race, put down a finger. Number five. If you made lunch for your child to bring to school more than three times a week during the school year, put down a finger. Okay. If your mom was married at Emanuel UCC, put down a finger. Seventeen. Okay. If your mom was the first one to have the talk with you about the birds and the bees, put your finger down. If you had a doll baby as a kid and named it a name you thought you would be used for your child or a pet in later life, put down a finger. Mama. <laughs> Holy cow, <laughs> we have a winner. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you all for playing. If you want to answer some more questions after church, come see me. for always adding levity to our day. And we invite you to rise in body and spirit to join in our hymn of praise.
Please be seated. One of the things we do as a church is to recognize the ways in which we have not lived up to being the person and image of love that we would hope to be and to let that go into the hands of God's mercy. And we do that in a prayer of confession. And I invite you to join with me. Lord of mercy, there are so many times in our lives when we feel alone. We wonder where you are. We cry out to you in our confusion, pain, and hurt. And when you do not immediately grant the prayers of our cries, we begin to doubt that you care or exist. Stop us from going down this path of self-destruction. Help us look around and find the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. Forgive us when we are quick to doubt and arrogant in our demands. Give us a spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministries of love and hope that you have placed before us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, even in the midst of difficult times, the light of God is shining within you, on you, and through you. Out of God's great love, you have been redeemed and made whole. Rejoice, beloved of God. Amen.
Well, thank you, choir. You know how when the liturgists are here and they always say how great it is to hear the choir singing right in your ear, it really, you know, hits your soul. I don't know about that song with people knocking at my door. <laughs> uh, I'm getting to that age where, you know, it's a little worrisome. <laughs> but you did a fine job. <laughs> thank you, Pat and choir. Today's reading, oh, well, it's uh, from uh, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 23, but I'll be reading from uh, the good news for a modern man that I got from a mother in my home church when I grew up, and the last time I, I was, went uh, home uh, to New York where I grew up, uh, this just happened to be on the top of the uh, 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 book pile, and it was from my Sunday school teacher. It was a Christmas gift that I got in 1972. So uh, I don't know how modern it is, uh, but at, uh, in 1972, this was a cool book to have. If you love me, you obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Spirit of Truth, to stay with you forever. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But if you know him because he remains with you and lives in, with, in you, I will not leave you alone. I will come back to you. I should have brought my glasses with me. <laughs> In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And because I live, you will also live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Whoever accepts my commandments and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. My Father will love him who loves me. I too will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas said, Lord, how can it be that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, whoever loves me will obey my message. My father will love him and my father and I will come to him and live with him. Whoever does not love me does not obey my words. The message you have heard is not mine, but it comes from the Father who sent me. This ends the reading. Thank you, Rich. I forgot my glasses too, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Maybe we have a glasses elf among us. Before uh, we pray, I just want to say I know that this day can hold a lot of feelings uh, for people that uh, it can be tough. Um, people can feel grief and anger and sadness, even in the midst of the joy that we celebrate with Mother's Day as well. And so I just want to offer that we are holding all of that together in the divine love. Uh, and it is my hope and prayer that this sermon has comfort for that whole range. Uh, in this. So I invite you to pray with me. God, shine your love on this text, on these words, and most of all on these people. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I remember the day that I was just doing something, I don't even remember what it was, and I looked down and I thought, that is my mother's hand. It looked exactly like the hand I remembered when I was a child. The wrinkles are the same, the spots are the same, the way the veins raise up, it was just weird. 
And it freaked me out for a little bit, but also it has become a source of comfort for me to remember the things that she has gone through and the ways that that shaped her hands and the love that she offered with those hands as mine begin to show some of that love given as well. I was thinking about this with the idea of Jesus saying that wherever we are giving love, that is where Christ is. And it made it feel so much like the ways in which sometimes we'll think we're being ourselves and something from our mothers or our fathers or the people who raised us will just blah, burst right out. You know what I'm talking about, right? So I did a little Facebook poll. Some of you were kind enough to answer on there. It was a hot Facebook poll. I tell you what, people had a lot of responses um, of ways in which they have found themselves just like channeling their parents. Some of the things that they had said were sage advice, things like always go to the bathroom before you leave anywhere or always leave a place nicer than you found it. Beauty is as beauty does. This too shall pass, maybe like a kidney stone, but it will pass. Every solution has a problem. And do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think I know where that mom got that one. Sometimes it was finding themselves having heard words of comfort that they were passing along. One person said, they remembered their mother saying, bad moms never worry about being good moms in order to calm them down when they were worried about being a good mom. They do the best they know was a way that someone remembered their mother offering compassion to those whose actions they disapproved of. And some found their parents coming out of them in moments of frustration. Some of the repeatable ones here are, just listen to me. Stop fooling and farting around, and y'all are cruising for a bruising. And sometimes they found themselves repeating traumas that they didn't even want to repeat, but that were ingrained in them by their parents who perhaps were traumatized themselves. Things like criticism of their child's looks or mockery of their pain or proclaiming them unlikely to amount to something. People saw themselves repeating those patterns and it was proof that trauma can live on even when the people who perpetuated it have died. Others found that they were embodying their parents in different ways of being in the world. One person said, I rescue earthworms from drying out or drowning on the sidewalk. It's something I learned from seeing my mother do it. Another one said, my mother was chronically and severely depressed and I realized I was depressed when I started staying in bed all day like she did. And another said, my mother is a talented artist, but she gave up on painting for exhibitions after her divorce in 1987. And as a young adult, I got into artist management and promotions, mostly helping single moms. The legacies of our parents, the good, the bad, the ugly, they live within us, right? It's summed up so well in what our own Elsie Morrison told her son, Steve, as long as you're alive, I'll never be dead. And I think that that is kind of what Jesus was implying here, what he was offering his disciples, knowing that they were about to lose him in the same body that they had known. And he was trying to give sort of motherly advice to make sure that they would be okay, even when he was not with them. While he was leaving them, he would never truly be away from them. Every time they loved their neighbors, as he taught them, God and God's son appeared within them. Those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. In this passage of scripture, we are listening in on Jesus's speech on Monday, Thursday. We've done a little rewind uh, back to Monday, Thursday, and this comes right after he has washed his disciples' feet. 
It's before he has blessed the bread and wine. That day is called mandi because it comes from the Latin word mandatum or mandate. And that mandate is the one that is referenced in verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. What is that commandment? A few verses before that, he says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Or as Elsie might have said, as long as you're showing love, I'll never be dead. Your leader may be killed in the most shameful way. Strange things may happen with the Holy Spirit. We'll learn more about that next week. The church may rise or fall in power, but as long as we are loving our neighbors as ourselves, we are embodying Christ. Love is the way of being that is in us when we have been raised with Jesus, just as our parents show up when they have raised us. Adoption into the family of Christ or birth into the family of God puts divine love in our bloodlines. And we are woven into that divine tapestry. The loom clicks and we become part of it. That golden thread of love always woven within us. Last week, I talked about one of my favorite theologians, Julian of Norwich, who lived in the 13th century. She was a mystic. And I promised a little more of Julian's wisdom today. She wrote something called showings or revelations that came to her when she was sick uh, in her early 20s. And one of the things was radical for this woman who is now a Catholic saint. Just want to point that out. She claimed the motherhood of God in the 13th century, even as at the same time she claimed the fatherhood of God. She was not really bothered by gender. God was beyond all gender and encompassed all gender. And fun fact, this passage translates Holy Spirit as he, but it's actually neutral in the Greek. So you could say she, you could say he, you could say they, whatever. It's beyond gender. But in a revelation called Jesus is our mother, Julian writes this, just as God is our father, so God is also our mother. And he showed me this truth in all things, but especially in sweet words when he said, it is. As if to say, I am the power and the goodness of the father, the wisdom of the mother. I am the light and the grace, which is love. I am the Trinity. I am the unity. I am the supreme God of all things. I am the one who makes you love. I am the one who makes you desire love. And I am the never ending fulfillment of all that love. She continues, I then saw with complete certainty that God before creating us loved us and his love never lessened and never will. In love, he has accomplished all his works and in this love, he oriented us and our good. And in this love, our life is eternal. She later goes on to elaborate on a popular image in the medieval times, which was the idea of Jesus as the mother giving birth to new life. And the idea was that the wound that Jesus had on the Christ was actually the birth canal that gave us new life. And you can see it in medieval art if you know what symbols to look for. But Julian said, our savior, Jesus, is our true mother in whom we are endlessly born and out of whom we shall never come. In whom we are endlessly born and out of whom we shall never come. All of this, I think, makes Mother's Day, a great day to remember Christ as our mother. This holiday, you may know, because I usually bring it up every year, was started by Julia Ward Howe in a protest, an anti-war protest calling upon mothers to protest the war in order to bring their sons home. This was World War I. No, it was even before that. And 
In 1908, it was picked up by Anna Jarvis, who was from West Virginia, who worked with her church on a campaign to get it instated as a national holiday, a day of advocating for peace and the end of war, a day for returning to love for one another as we would love ourselves. Unfortunately, it was so corrupted by companies seeking to profit off of it that she later denounced the idea of that holiday. But that original sentiment that to love our children is to work for peace is a way of acting out Jesus's mandate to love one another, not just our own family, but the world that God created and all those within it. Because as Julian of Norwich said, Jesus is our mother and loves us with that kind of fierce and sacrificial and sometimes cutting and stern, but always with our best interest at heart kind of love and asks us to share that love with one another. When our oldest child was a baby and hated the car, we found Uncle Paul was the voice that could most soothe him. You may know him as Paul Simon. And one of my favorite songs to sing along to in the car with him was about the unconditional love of a mother to a son. Loves me like a rock. No matter what he does, his mama's love gives him great confidence. Whether he's a boy in church and hears the devil call his name, or a young man tempted to stray from his lover, or even he imagines if he were president of the United States being told to bow down to Congress, he could be strong because he knew of his mother's love. Oh, my mama loves me. She loves me. She get down her knees and hug me. Oh, she loves me like a rock. She rocks me like the rock of ages and loves me. She loves me, loves me, loves me, loves me. It is loving and being loved then that allows God to dwell visibly within us. Each time we show that love, we reveal God's grace to our neighbor and ourselves. And it's already in us. We already have that love in our souls. As long as we are loving, Jesus is never dead. As long as we remember that God's love dwells within us, God's love can shape our actions toward others. And even when we aren't able to live up to that perfect godly love, and none of us can, God's love continues to be a rock for us, a strength to which we can turn for help. And so if you are remembering or grieving a beloved mother today, May you take comfort in the recognition of something good within you that never could have been without that person's influence. May you see her in your hands, in your words, in your loving actions. If you are being celebrated as a mother today, may you find great joy in the fact that your child will never be able to unknow you, even if they try really hard, that your love lives within them and if you were missing the concept of a mother that you did not have or have sadness about the mother you would like to have been, may you find comfort in the ways that Jesus is the great mother out of whom we are constantly being born, a womb so great it encompasses you and all whom you love. And if you are here as a child of God, know that no matter what your relationship with mothers or motherhood is, the great and divine parent is going to love you like a rock and rock you like the rock of ages and love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. And every time you share that love, you embody that divine parent in this world. Thanks be to God, our Father, Christ, our Mother, and the Holy Spirit, our source of light and grace. Amen. Am I on? Now I am. Thanks. There are many ways to give to the church, and like you've heard before, uh, there's online giving, the, the uh, offering plate in the narthex, um, 
there's the QR codes, and even if you put money in this pocket here, yeah. my jacket might get brighter, but I'll be happy to put the <laughs> donations in the plate for you. Let's have our offertory prayer. Generous and loving God, we remember. We remember others who have encouraged us and the many people that have taught us. We have been forgiven, we have been loved, we excel with the knowledge of your teachings and admit that we haven't done it all ourselves. Our tithes and offerings are a response to all that has come before us. We pray that the funds we pledge will be used to encourage, to teach, to forgive, and to love Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. you to remain standing if it is uh, comfortable for you to do so. Um, and before we do our closing prayer, I neglected a very important announcement, which is that next Sunday we have a congregational meeting after the service uh, to hear a report from the consultant that we have hired about the surveys that you have participated in. We had great return for the surveys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody who did that. Um, so please plan to stay. He promises it won't take super long. Um, and we will uh, also have some opportunities um, to talk with him directly, too, if that's something that you would like to do. And now, let us close in prayer. God of love, in whom we are constantly being born and also in whom we are constantly encompassed, we give you thanks for the ways in which you show us love over and over. And we pray your guidance and your sage wisdom and your constant repetition of your commandment to love one another. We pray that they will give us the courage to live that out and to embody that love. We ask your healing light, especially on those in our hearts, on May's family, on the Andersons, on all mothers, biological and chosen, with gratitude for their sacrifices, on all who grieve harder on this day because of losses or unrealized hopes or missed opportunities around motherhood. We pray for all who are sick. We pray for all who are homebound or in nursing and senior facilities, especially Jane, Mary Lou, Mary Ellen, Doris, Gail. We pray everywhere for people affected by violence, disasters, oppression, and war. And we hold in our hearts those who are too tender for public speech, but we lift to you now in silence. All this we lift to you as we pray, as Jesus taught us, reaching out to you as our maker, our mother, and our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory forever. Friends, go from here knowing that woven into your very DNA, is the love of God, and God will love you, love you, love you the whole way through. So go and share that love to everyone you meet and go in peace. Amen. <laughs>